Hello! Today we're going to be talking about our transitions between exercises to make them more efficient and for us to be able to keep our heart rate up from us transitioning from one exercise to another. Today we're going to be talking about our skipping rope, how to set those up, our dumbbell placement because that's super important and also as you could probably guess using a rower and how to set your feet up, get in and out as quickly as possible. Let's get into the first two where we're talking about our skipping rope and dumbbell together. Okay, so we're actually gonna talk about our first two at the same time. When we place our rope down, we don't want to be doing this. We finish the amount of reps we need, and then we just like put the skipping rope down, and then we're gonna come over to our dumbbell and start doing dumbbell cleans. And then I put the dumbbell down, and it's really good, great. And then I'm back here, and I have to sort this out uh, to get the rope in the right spot and then get in, make sure the hands are right, and then I can start my skipping again. Though, actually, we can be more efficient. If, when we put our rope down after our skipping, we take that split second just to place it down beautifully in our U shape, coming over to our dumbbell, doing our cleans, blah, 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 placing our dumbbell down beautifully. We can just go straight back in. There's no faffing around. You're not being an idiot by just flopping it around. Technically, the closer I have my dumbbell, where I'm still able to do my skips, the better, because I can transition quickly to just doing the next exercise. Makes sense as well for doing push-ups or even pull-ups. Have things all near each other so that you're able to transition faster. Now that you understand our skipping rope and dumbbell, let's get on with the rower. A lot of people, when they put their feet in, they might like do one foot and then do the other foot and then grab one hand and then get the other hand and then come down and then start their row, which is fine. Gets you there. And the same thing when they're on the way out. Get caught and then have to like grab the heel to push off their shoe. And you're missing on a lot of efficiency. This is what we want to be doing. This is how we're going to be efficient. When we're doing that, what I'm doing is I'm grabbing both of the straps at the same time and driving my toes up into them and then sliding down. Grab the straps, pull them tight, the handles, start your row. Once we've finished our row, we're going to put both of our hands down so that we have both hands free. We're going to grab with the palm of our hands the little black C2 toggles. We push them down as we lift our toes. As you can see, when I lift my toe, it pulls more of the strap away from the foot. Heels back, slide out. There's no catching at the back. There's no being too restricted by the amount of straps. And then again, when you're ready to come back into your rower during your HIIT workout or CrossFit training, you can go straight back into grabbing those straps, putting your feet in, pulling tight, grabbing the handles. That same beginning. So you're setting yourself up for when you come back around to do your second row. You grab the straps, put your feet in, Pull tight, grab, go. Once you finish your rowing, both hands in, palms down, press, toes up, slide forwards, heels out, run. And that's it. Those are the three things that right now at least, because there's many other ways to be more efficient in our workouts, that are gonna help you, hopefully mainly the rower. Feet used to always faff me about and get really annoying and frustrating. And now you're gonna be able to smoothly transition in and out of that rower. Thank you so much for watching today and hopefully see you soon. Bye guys.